British Columbia's pulp and paper industry began soon after the dawn of the 20th century. The very first mill was built at Swanson Bay on BC's north coast in 1906. Other mills then soon followed. Then along came the First World War and the Great Depression and then the Second World War. The industry struggled to survive. Finally, in the post-war years of the 1950s and 1960s, the economic environment improved to such an extent that the industry started to thrive again. New, modern mills started to be built on both the coast and in the interior. All of a sudden, in the early 60s, a whole pile of new mills were starting to be built in British Columbia. In 1956, I think I was 19, I was able to get a job at the pulp mill and worked in the production. What attracted me was uh, to have a steady job and be in the pulp industry and uh, make that type of wages. 1956, I was 18 years old. Our family moved from Nova Scotia to Prince Rupert. I had just graduated from high school, so I was ready to go to work, I thought. I was always interested in pulp and paper and was hired by Columbia Cellulose almost the second day that I was in town. That was big money, <laughs> even though I think it was something like $2.90 an hour or something like that. I was born in Ocean Falls, 1947. The main employer when I was growing up was Crown Zellerback company out of San Francisco, we produced newsprint. Being a company town, they ran everything. The only way you got into Ocean Falls was by boat or by plane. There was no roads in and out. There was no other employees there except for the federal government, post office, the police. Even the doctors were hired by Crown Zollerback. We also had a hotel there that had 350 rooms. It was the third biggest hotel in BC and it was full of single guys. They say for every one pulp mill job, you have about four or five other full-time jobs that are created in the communities. The pulp mills pay a lot of taxes. The pulp mills consume chips from the sawmills. There's so many things that are tied into the operation of the pulp mills. In 1966, I quit school, walked across the bridge, and got hired that same day to work in Ocean Falls. Started training, that was it. Everything was manual, so you had to learn real quick. I was 25 years old when I got my job in the pulp mill. I worked in a machine room, Camphor Pulp here in Prince George, BC. The wages were great. It was shift work and you had lots of time off. Back then and today, if, if people get a job to work in the pulp industry, they, they jump at it because it's well worth it. If you've ever been in a paper mill, it's noisy, metal against metal. Everything was in sign language, eh? Or you get up close and talk to guys here and, and, and it was kind of scary. And hardly any guards in those days had seen people lose their fingers, you know, getting caught in the nip. Just chopped you, chop, chop, gone. You didn't even know it until you looked down and seen your fingers gone. Everybody was always concerned about high pressure steam. We had these great big boilers. Burns from the dryer cans. There was a lot of different ways you could get injured in the mill. It's also the gases. We were using lots of acid, acetic anhydride, which uh, today would be considered carcinogenic for sure. Chlorine was a big thing, and SO2 was another thing that burnt your lungs. And hydrogen sulfite, you barely ever smelled it. Once you smelled it like that, you normally passed out. You didn't know if you were going into a gas condition until you smelled it. We hardly had any personal protective equipment on. You know, you would get home, your clothes would just smell of this liquor. You had problems breathing, you're coughing. I was just happy to get a job, so I was willing to do whatever it took to keep my employer happy. We took so many chances back then. The training program was next to nothing. The guy who trained you was just new to the job, and he only trained you up to what he knew. There was no manuals or anything for the lower job, but once you got up to a winerman's position, people kept little notebooks, and that was the only manuals they ever had. You followed what you considered to be the senior people, and if you saw them do something, it was probably okay for you to do it. The health and safety was just more of an honor system. I think it was harder for anybody to keep track of it. Companies always said safety is number one. 
but there's been times when you say to yourself, there's, there's no way safety is number one. I started in 1975 as an industrial hygiene officer with the Workers' Compensation Board. It was an emerging field at the time, so it was up to us to set about as how we want to be very effective. So we had the freedom to establish inspection protocols, and like any industry of that age, there was a lot of asbestos used for insulation of piping and buildings. So it had all kinds of hazards. We still hadn't got the culture of safety so ingrained that everybody was on board. We were still using tag out. Lockout became a very big thing that changed a whole lot in our industry. Which was really good for the company and good for the workers, but we had lots of opposition from the company to bring that lockout in. We had to put joint committees together in every single department on every single piece that you could think of to make sure that when you were going to lock it out that it was really locked out. And so that involvement got people all thinking all the time about safety. In 1972, Crown's sold the mill and the town site to the provincial government and keep it running. I became a union safety rep in Ocean Falls when the mill started up in 72 again. Somebody had to be in the safety side of it and I was kind of in the safety, like the safety part of it. So I took the responsibility and it was a fight. It was a fight in those days. I became the chairman of our joint safety committee and that's union guys and company guys all caring about making sure that everybody at the end of their workday goes home safely. There's times that you had to go in there and you had to pound the table and tell the employer, look, we're gonna put pressure on you, we're gonna to talk to WCB. And then their eyes would light up and just hold it, maybe we can do a bit more, or maybe we can do this, you know. The fact that uh, WCB was there made it a lot better. The guys would come to me and as a shop steward, I'd go see the foreman and I'd push the issue and take it up in the meetings. We got results. It made you feel good that you were able to take care of your, uh, your fellow worker. The unions take a big role in shaping the culture of health and safety in the pulp industry. There's times that we've had some really heated meetings. I've seen managers leave the meetings upset. You know, I've seen union members leave the meetings upset. But in the end, you come back uh, to the table because you know what the common goal is, and, and that's health and safety. Company put more emphasis into safety in that. Committee meetings were bigger. More people were involved. More information was available. And then they started sending the union reps to Vancouver for the pulp and paper safety meetings. So yeah, I got involved in that. We worked hard at it, and we became the safest mill in BC, and a couple of times the safest mill in Canada. Today, Ocean Falls is dying because 18 months ago, the government shut down the mill. It said it was losing money, millions of dollars worth, and it gave the townspeople six months to cash in on generous government assistance to get out or suffer the consequences of staying behind. It ran pretty good, but deep down you knew you weren't competitive because of the cost of buying the wood on the open market, shipping the product in and out. In 1980, Ocean Falls finally shut down for good. And I had moved to Crofton with my family to become a paper maker down there. Back in the day, WorkSafe was in the mill several times a year. There'd be a lot of surprise visits. Obviously, we are always interfering with their work. When we go there, we, especially industrial hygiene surveys or inspections usually take several days. Our role was to make sure they complied with the regulations and they had a continual improvement program in how to keep enhancing the health and safety of the employees. So we meet with the employer and employee representatives and set out the plan for our inspections. We considered the Workers' Compensation Board not a, a policeman, but a partner in helping us. We would call them for interpretations. We found the Workers' Compensation, the regulations were a little daunting. 
it was for the whole force industry. So it wasn't really related to just the paper mills or the pulp mills. And being just a worker it was hard to understand, like go through, pick it out. It is difficult for an employer to glean out what exactly applies to his or her operation. So it was a perfect time to develop a compliance guide which all the officers used with respect to measuring compliance and all the pulp mills used in how to comply. So that established a benchmark as what's the minimum requirement will be when we go to inspect. And we asked for some feedback as well. They said about time, it'll be good to have a guide like this. That worked well for the industry because they had the resources to take on a program approach to health and safety as well. Because safety was so successful, everything else seemed to fall in place. We also set production records while we were being the safest mill. Those that worked in 56 wouldn't recognize the plants today. The biggest change of all was computerization. And if you did not computerize, you probably weren't going to survive. Some of the older mills have gone down. The companies haven't reinvested in them. So it's survival of the fittest, and it's unfortunate, but that's the way the industry is. There's a number of challenges with chips, costs, and things like that. When I was president, I was high as a thousand guys were working in the pulp mill. Right now, there's 446, and they put out more production now than they did then. Automation and technology have uh, absolutely changed the industry. There's way more high-level gas detection systems, leak detection systems for pressure drops. It's taken out a lot of the pinch points. Technology has, uh, you know, advanced health and safety uh, so much more. It's great for the industry. You can see the change coming, like, holy cow, look, this is gonna be great. And then the next year, it'll be even greater. There was a lot of good stuff out there that made everything safer and more efficient and, you know, good for the company, good for the worker. There's no question that the mills are way safer. And there's a whole lot of good reasons for that. And certainly the Workers' Compensation Board played a part of that. But the one thing that you have to have is the trust of your employees. They have to believe that you really do care. And if they believe that, they'll support you. Health and safety has improved over the decades tremendously. So I sincerely hope BC remains a leader in pulp and paper industry, and I hope it thrives. I think getting a job in the pulp and paper industry is the best thing that's ever happened to me. You know, I think people will remember me. The, the guy worked, uh, you know, he worked hard, did his job, we had some fun, and we stayed as safe as we could. Like we remember that I was a guy that tried to do the best for workers, whether they, they be uh, management or whether they be in the union, and I would be happy hoping that other people thought that I had done a good job for them. Looking back, I quite enjoyed it. Money was great. It was unbelievable. It was fulfilling because I got told by a lot of people that, you know, you did good. And that was pretty good for a guy who quit school. I think the thing that I'm most proud of was the relationship that I had with all the people that worked in the plants. Sure, everybody doesn't like the manager, but I never felt that. I pride myself on that, that when I retired, we had excellent safety, we had excellent labor relations, excellent production, and I like to think that I played some small role in making that all happen.